By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a bullet hole effect like this. There's also a big announcement at the end of this video, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Let's get started. This tutorial is going to assume that you already have a few things in place. I assume you already have a player that can move around, along with some kind of projectile weapon that can shoot. Now, if you don't have these things, uh, you're not going to be able to follow along with this tutorial. So make sure you check the links in the description for tutorials to set this up if you don't have it yet. Now as you can see, my bullet just goes right past this wall, which obviously doesn't look quite right. The wall does in fact have a collision shape, as you can see when I run up to it. Let's focus on uh, one thing at a time. First, go ahead and open your bullet scene. Now, mine is an area 2D, and yours is likely one as well, but if not, that's no problem. Just go ahead and uh, add an area 2D with a collision shape to your bullet. Now this next part is very important. You need to make sure that your bullet's collision mask is on the same level as your wall's collision layer. Otherwise, the bullet will not be able to see the wall properly, and this entire thing will not work. So again, your bullet's collision mask needs to be on your wall's collision layer. Mine are both set to 1, so I'm good to go. And once you have that set up, it's as easy as connecting the body entered signal to your bullet script and then calling the cue free function for that bullet. As you can see, now, when the bullet hits the wall, it gets deleted. Now it's time for step two, adding the bullet hole effect. Go ahead and make a new scene and add a sprite and an animation player to the scene. Grab whatever bullet hole sprite you're using and add it to the sprite's texture property. Here, I'm just turning off the filter to get rid of the blur. As you can see, my sprite is actually a sheet with six separated sprites. If yours is too, make sure to set the H frames property to however many frames your sheet has. Make a new animation and call it Start. Now cycle through however many sprites you have and then finish the animation. If you only have one sprite, you can go ahead and skip this part. Once you've finished making the animation, add a script and call the ready function to play the animation. This will make it so that as soon as the effect gets instanced, it plays the animation. That's all for the effect, so let's head back into the bullet scene. Now make a new variable that loads your effect scene. And then add another variable that creates an instance of it in the body entered function. We do this, that way every bullet effect made is unique. It probably isn't important for this particular thing, but this can be very important for instancing other items, so it's a good habit to get into. Next, add the effect to the world scene in whatever way works for you. Personally, I like getting the root and then the world node, but you can also use the get parent or get node function multiple times if you prefer that. Finally, set the transform equal to the bullet's transform. This will add the effect in the exact spot the bullet is currently in. As you can see, it's working perfectly. Now the next step is down to personal preference. If you like the way it is here, then you're good to go. But if you want the bullets to fade out and disappear over time, it's as easy as going back into the effects animation and then animating the bullets modulation property, specifically the alpha value. 
This will change the transparency of the bowl. Then, use the call method track at the end of the animation to call the QFree function on the effect, which will then delete it from the scene tree so it doesn't clutter it up. As you can see, it's working perfectly. Thank you for watching, and make sure you subscribe for more Godot tutorials. Okay, announcement time. So in my free time lately, I have been working on developing a small game uh, I've called Sea Makers. Uh, it's definitely far from complete, uh, but I think there's enough to do at the moment to have at least a little bit of fun with it. Or at least, you know, that's what I think. It's a sci-fi roguelike game about bounty hunting, so if that sounds up your alley, or if you just want to help support the channel, definitely check out that link in the description, which will bring you to the itch.io download page. I'm open to literally any and all feedback, so please, just give it a try and let me know what you think, either in the comments in this video or on the itch page. Thank you again, and that's all for today.